It's lab testing day. <laughs> I'm a, Are you nervous? I don't know why. It's just it's just data that's going to help my training. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. So I've got the full works today. I'm in Cardiff and yeah, I'm getting lactate threshold testing, economy, um, carb and fat utilization, a VO2 max test. So by the end of this test, I will know everything about my physiology or nearly everything. And yeah, it should be good. I obviously did lactate testing with my own monitor on the treadmill in the gym, but this will be uh, with Dan Nash, the physiologist and GB runner um, and 50K record holder, actually British record holder. Um, but anyway, he'll be taking the test and I will find out accurate thresholds, see if they've moved on and also to see if my testing actually worked and I got it right. And then I'll also, what I'm really interested in is because it's in a lab, I will get fat and carb utilization rates at different speeds. And that's really important, especially for the marathon. Running economy, which is also quite interesting. And then VO2 max, which um, I'm not so concerned with. I'm not looking for a massively high VO2 max at the moment, but it is nice to know where it is now. And then the plan is in about eight weeks time, just before the marathon, I will have this all retested and I will see how I've progressed and how I'm looking going into Manchester. So hopefully, obviously my threshold will be a bit better in eight weeks time and I'll be ready to race. But yeah, uh, today's going to be good. You've kindly said uh, you're going to come and film mm -hmm. and see me suffer on the VO2 max test. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think that's all I've got to say at the moment. Uh, obviously, we've got loads of data to go through after this, but it's time to get in there and uh, get tested. Da, da, da. <laughs> so I arrived at the Sport Physiology Hub, which is based at Cardiff Met University. And this test was taken just under nine weeks before race day. After the usual niceties, Dan had me jump on the treadmill to do my warm up. I wore the Nike Alpha Fly version one so that the data is specific and relevant to what I'll be racing in. After an easy 10 minutes at 13 kilometers an hour on the treadmill, Dan takes a blood sample from my earlobe. This sample gives him a blood lactate concentration, which can be used as a baseline. Yeah, the, uh, Fuji Alpha Fly. Um, yeah, I find them better than the shoes. Yeah, I'm not going to teach it out, so After I've quickly had a chance to slag off the Alpha Fly version 2, Dan goes on to tell me that he tested the Alpha Fly version 1 versus the Adios Pro 3, and that his running economy in both was exactly the same, which is pretty interesting. What's the difference? Well, I tested them economy-wise, yeah. exactly the same. Really? Exactly the same. Although my alpha is have done that half few miles. Yeah. Um. Uh, I've got your data from 2018, I found yeah. it. So we'll see if you've shown. So after my lactate baseline level was taken, which was 0 0.98 millimole per litre, it was time to find out that I had indeed not got taller since 2018. I had put a few pounds on, but this really doesn't bother me as my weight fluctuates depending on the training and I'd rather go into a marathon block a little bit heavier, uh, more sturdy, robust, as I find if I get too lean, I'm more susceptible to injury. So warm up done, weighed in. Next is the lactic threshold test. So we're gonna do five minute steps and then increase the pace by a kilometer an hour each, after each one and just take lactates at each. Um, yeah, so this will determine LT1 and LT2. I'll also be wearing the mask, so uh, this will also go as the data of how much um, fat and carbs I'm burning at age intensity. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> So the way the threshold testing worked in the lab is really simple. The first thing Dan did was set me up with a mask. This was to measure the oxygen and carbon dioxide breathed in and out. I then jumped on the treadmill for five minute steps. After each step, I would jump onto the sides of the treadmill. Dan took a blood sample from my ear and this would give the lactate concentration from the previous step. I then gave a rating of perceived effort on the ball scale between six and 20 to say how I felt. I would then quickly jump back on the treadmill. The treadmill speed was increased by a kilometer an hour each step, and I would just do five minute steps each time. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, right. Sweaty. 
Fine. You are? You look like you're having a whale of a time up there. You can't see me smiling. <laughs> you could have been doing anything. <laughs> Poke my tongue out. Right, so that's the lactate testing done. And it felt a bit harder than normal. I think I think they put it on a little bit of an incline. Uh, so I'm, and it, it, it surprised me. Uh, yeah, each, each speed felt a little bit more difficult. I think the fact there was a little bit of an incline, wearing a mask, people watching, quite hot in the room, even with those three fans. Those three fans felt amazing to start with but I soon warmed up. But yeah, that was good. I haven't seen the results yet. Um, you couldn't, I couldn't quite hear. They were calling out lactate numbers, but I couldn't quite hear um, with the fans and the noise and stuff. But yeah, that's done. 10 minute break now, and then we go into the VO2 max testing, where we'll ramp up the speed of the treadmill, one kilometer an hour every minute, until, until I pop, basically, I think. Um, but yeah, I think the data there will show that slower than my own testing, but maybe that's to do with the slight incline of the treadmill, I don't know. But I'm looking forward to seeing what, what data comes out of it, especially um, the carbs and fat utilization, um, because I think I'm a very glycolytic runner and burn a lot of carbs, which is like the opposite of what you want for a marathon. So I'm trying to address that in training, but it'll be interesting to see what the data says. All right, I've got 10 minutes breather, and then back in to try and run fast with a mask on. So after about 15 minutes of recovery, it was time to do the VO2 max test. This test involved running faster and faster and faster until I couldn't run any further. So it started at 14 kilometers an hour and every minute the speed of the treadmill increased by one kilometers an hour and the goal was to hang on for as long as possible. And it was at this stage I was considering my life choices. I reckon you could have tried a bit harder. The show was like shaking. Oh dear. Time's still running. <laughs> Right, now for the exciting bit, let's go through the results. Dan has sent me over a really thorough and insightful report, and I will go through that in a minute, but before I do so, I'd like to thank Dan at the Sports Physiology Hub for testing me. It is so useful for training to see these insights, and this is a hub where anyone can get tested. You don't need to be an elite or sub-elite athlete. It costs £75 for a VO2 max test, £90 if you want threshold testing, or if you want both together, it's a discounted deal of £140. Well worth it to know accurate zones and to see what your physiology is. So I'm going to bring up the report on the screen so you can see what Dan sent through and how useful it was. If anyone does want a copy of my report to look through to see if it's the sort of insights and something interesting for you to do, then let me know and I will send it over to you. So let's look at the report that Dan sent across and look at the data. If you look at this first page, you can see my details plus the description of the test that we did. Then we've got the first table, which is the threshold test, which was the first test that I did. We've got the speed of the treadmill, converted to pace, and then we have the lactate, the heart rate, and my perceived effort in the final column. One thing to note is how low the lactates are compared to the levels I get with my Lactate Pro 2. 
So the Lactate Pro 2 is a portable monitor, whereas in the lab they've got a very expensive and accurate analyzer. I spoke to Dan about this and he said it's very normal for the lab um, analyzer to give much lower values. So not to compare the values with the Lactate Pro 2, but instead follow the trends and the curve. So if we look at the figure that Dan has drawn up, he has marked where the Lactate Threshold and the Lactate Turn Point are. I use the terms LT1 and LT2 to mean the same thing. So that first rise in lactate levels is the lactate threshold or the LT1. And then that second rise where it goes out of a steady state is the lactate turn point or the LT2. If we look at the next page of the report, you can see my LT1 or in Dan's terminology, the lactate threshold is 14.6 kilometers an hour, which is 406 a K or 636 a mile. And the heart rate for that was 154. And then the LT2 or the lactate turn point was 17.7, which is 323 a K or 527 a mile with a heart rate of 177, which is the exact same heart rate I got when I tested my lactate levels with the Lactate Pro 2. So despite the paces being different and the lactate levels being different, that point on the curve equated to the same heart rate. If we look further down on the second page of the report, we can see my economy and my fat and carb utilization at different paces. As you can see from the graph, my fat utilization is not a lot. And I was hoping to see higher levels of fat burning than this. So this was a little bit disappointing, but my economy is very good. Dan described it as world class, which is a massive boost to my ego. Um, but yeah, my fat utilization was not ideal. On to page three of the report and we're now looking at the VO2 max test. My VO2 max test gave me a score of 68.3 and that is relative to my body weight. If you look at the absolute value, it was 4.88 litres per minute and that came at a speed of 249 per K. The heart rate was 190 and my lactate after two minutes after the test was 6.59. So this VO2 max score is pretty much where I expected it. I have had scores of over 70 before, but with marathon training, I wasn't really expecting it to be a super high score and it doesn't really need to be higher than this to meet my marathon goals. The next figure on the report are the training zones and this is so helpful. Go into a lab and getting really accurate training zones, which you can then take out into the field and into your training is super important. So Dan has drawn up all the training zones for me. He's given me the different speeds and paces this equates to and the different heart rates and even the RPE. So yeah, that's really helpful and I can use this going forward in my training. I found all of the reports super detailed, really interesting and massively helpful for my training. One of the really nice things Dan does is in the final section, he leaves some feedback and training recommendations. So if we go through it, my thresholds need improving if I'm going to hit my goals. Um, he mentions that my substrate utilization, my fat oxidation is low. And to improve this, I need to do more volume in zone one and zone two, which I know I know I need to increase my volume. So it's a nice reminder. Um, a boost of the ego and the economy. He says my economy is exceptional. He's seen these values before, but only in world class athletes and that my VO2 max is good and it's not a limiting factor for my marathon goals. So, yeah, my VO2 max level and economy values are good enough to run a 217 marathon. However, I would need to increase my LT2 or lactate turn point to 90% of my VO2 max and it's currently only at 82%. So in order to do this, I would need to do lots and lots of threshold work in that zone three zone, which uh, is the goal of training. So this report has been super helpful in guiding how I train towards the marathon from here. One of the things that concerned me when I first saw the report was how low my fat oxidation rates are. It's one of the things that I can't test unless I go into a lab. So it was really interesting to see my fat utilization rates. It's so important to be burning high levels of fat in the marathon, otherwise you're going to bonk and hit the wall. But Dan reassured me and said, despite my fat oxidation rates being low, as long as my thresholds are in the right place and I take enough carbs through the race, then I've got a good chance of making it to the end without smashing into that wall and blowing up. So yeah, it's definitely something to work on, but not a huge disaster that my oxidation of fat isn't as high as I would have liked. My economy is exceptional. I'm going to keep saying it because it's like the one thing that was really good on this report. Uh, so that is good. My VO2 max is in a decent place 
but it is that threshold work that I need to do. Lots more volume, but in zone one and zone two to help the LT1 and much more work in zone three, that threshold work, which we all know that we need to spend lots of time for marathon training to improve the LT2 or the lactate turn point. So how will this report change my marathon training going forward? Well, my peak fat oxidation rates occurred at a lower heart rate and pace than I expected. So that means I can slow down on these steady runs. I don't need to be pushing the limit. I'm gonna get a good fat oxidation training effect going a little bit slower, which is gonna make me less fatigued going into the big session. So that's really useful and allows me to relax a little bit on my easy and steady days and know that I'm still getting a good training benefit and increasing that fat oxidation. I will also use my new accurate heart rate zones, which again is super helpful. Um, I've had testing done before and it's really nice to know your, your precise heart rate zone so it really helps guide training. I don't run looking at my heart rate all the time but once you finish a run it's nice to check in and see if you're doing it right and how your heart rate responded in that run. I've recently picked up the new Coros heart rate strap that goes on your arm so that's going to be really good for my training because I like to wear the chest heart rate strap and I do sometimes but it can cause some chafing and some irritation and sometimes it slips down. So having the new chorus arm strap is gonna allow me to track my heart rate without having the discomfort of a chest strap. As I mentioned in the report, one of the big takeaways was more threshold. I do a lot of threshold, but as I move into the more specific stage of marathon training, I'm gonna try and increase the threshold, but maybe like mix it into long runs so that I'm still getting the specificity of hard long runs for marathon training, but I'm getting a threshold benefit too. One of the biggest takeaways was that I need a lot more volume in zone one and zone two, but I don't need to do it as fast. So yeah, just trying to build my volume whilst getting the threshold working on top is the goal as I move forward towards Manchester. If you're considering getting tested, then I would highly recommend it. The insights are so valuable. It really does take the guesswork out of training and your physiology. I thought I was running zone two, um, that steady pace. Uh, below my LT1 but this testing shows that I can relax it a little bit and I'll still get that good training fat oxidation. Um, I've now got accurate zones, I've got these really good insights and it's given me confidence in my training going forward to try and uh, really get fit for Manchester. So I'll link to the website for the Sport Physiology Hub in the description. Uh, like I said the prices are £75 for a VO2 max test, £90 for the threshold testing or £140 for them both together. Uh, they also do that shoe economy testing, so if you've got a bunch of shoes and you're not sure which are the best ones for race day, you can take them in and get testing uh, in different shoes and see what your economy is in each. Again, thank you Dan and the Sports Physiology Hub for inviting me in for testing, and hopefully some of you will find this really interesting and want to go and get tested too. If you have any questions, just reach out to me, let me know, or reach out to the Sports Physiology Hub on Instagram or on their website, and you can find out more about what the testing involves.